ten seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about. I got to ask you about Enchant. That's the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. When you look you up, that that's a history that can't be denied. Mm-hmm. Um, how important do you feel like you were to her career blossoming who she is? How important? Yeah. If I didn't exist, she wouldn't exist. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One on One. You one of those guys, man. Like I said, we can't not talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's talk about your deal. You being linked with 1017. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about, I got to ask you about Enchant. That's the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. When you look you up, that that's a history that can't be denied. Mm-hmm. Um, how important do you feel like you were to her career blossoming who she is? How important? Yeah. If I didn't exist, she wouldn't exist. That's how much. Wow. That's how. If, that's if you didn't important. exist, she wouldn't exist. She wouldn't exist. But how did? What did you do to impact her so much that you felt like, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here? Pretty much anything you can ever think of, an artist is supposed to do for themselves. I had to do for her. I took it. I took an image. I took a face, and I pretty much put everything together. What I thought people would love, the music that I thought people would attract to. I posted the, the 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 sexual content that people would attract to on Instagram just to build a page. Yeah, but you said something. You said everything that an artist should do for themselves. Yeah. So you saying that she didn't she actually do anything. It. No. You did it all. No, I mean she had a. a what she did had, she? What part did she play, and what part did you play? The face and the voice. That's, That's all it. she played. With she the was face. the face and the voice. What record labels do for artists is what I was doing by myself. A and R and all that. Everything. I had ten jobs in one. I was writing the songs, recording the songs, mixing the songs, marketing the songs. So she didn't write her own songs. No, I mean she wrote her own songs. I don't want to take credit away from what she did do. She did write songs, but. There's a difference between a good song and great songs and hit songs. Okay, so you critiqued her song. I critiqued her style to where it was like, when I met her, she probably had a a, 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 a EP on SoundCloud with like 25 plays, but I seen the vision and I took what her vision was and I added to it and together we made motherfucking How did y'all meet? That's what I was about to ask. It was on Facebook. She was just like known in Fort Worth, in Dallas, Fort Worth as as a... pretty face on Facebook, um, Snapchat, shit like that. And um, I just found her and I heard the music. I told her to send me something. She sent me a song. She had a nice voice. And then from there on, I just hit her up and told her to come to the studio. And that's how we met. And from boom. At that, hold on. At that time, did you have any other artists you were working with? Yeah, I was working with this artist at the time called Na- Lil Nana, Kiana. And she had a song called Beat Up The Pot that kind of got popular around that time uh, and that's what really attracted Channing to what I had going on because okay. she seen Kiana you know, and she knew Kiana and she seen Kiana growing, growing you know, scaling mm-hmm. so she was like I gotta figure out what's going on over here so that's how she got in the mix with me so you like Kiana. working with females it's just I seen the vision before Cardi B and everybody came out I seen that mm-hmm. females were gonna be the next wave so I was putting together strippers and making them rap and saying, hey, we're going to talk about what y'all lifestyle is at the strip mm-hmm. club on album. So before the City Girls, I was trying to create the City Girls. Mm-hmm. But it's like you can't get everybody to see the vision. They they understand it and they might think, yeah, this sounds good, but you you really got to make people believe, believe. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you ain't, at that time I had no accomplishments, so it was hard to get people to believe that I can make it happen. But Shannon was one of those people who believed that I can make it happen over time, so it happened for her. So when you when you, when you say it happened for her, you basically you guys were together, you created a sound and you created a wave, mm-hmm. and then ten seventeen comes into play. How long after? How, I, how no, not only how long after, but how did it all happen? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? How did ten seventeen? Yeah, happen? how did they link up with you guys? How did that happen? I mean, there was a couple of more people that tried to reach out prior to ten seventeen. Uh, we had L. A. Reed with Hitco tried to hit out, uh, reach out. Uh, fucking um, uh, Hitco. Fucking um, um, who else was it? We had Def Jam in the beginning. We had Epic Records. We had a meeting with Sylvia Ron. That was okay. That was cool as fuck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then why you didn't choose any of them? Oh, uh, crazy situation that happened, and uh, I guess it was a conflict of interest. So, can you tell what crazy situation? 
I mean, just people we dealt with prior to the situation, and we got blackballed. This person tried to blackball us from having any type of accomplishments, but you can't stop. Somebody from the Dallas area, Fort Worth area? Yeah, somebody from Dallas, Fort Worth. So really? Yeah, they just tried to stop what was going on. and and just, Can I research and find out who this person is or how the hell? Could. I need to find out who this <laughs> is. You ain't going to speak on it, I so know. I need to I gotta <laughs> yeah, find out somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody, somebody, back. somebody. Who the hell is somebody? You know what I'm talking about? Mm. This boss talk, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Somebody. <laughs> nigga. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I need to find out who this is that so-called tried to blackball somebody, which it didn't work. Too it much didn't work. because you guys it end up on work. 1017. We ended up on 1017. You see what God have for you, nobody can, can stop that's it. That's right. Because it just wasn't meant for you to go where, at first, the other people that was reaching out to you. This is what it was meant for you to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.